Survivor guilt rears its ugly head in the form of a dream, or was it? Come back and find out. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? How you doing today? What's going on? <laughs> it's a good day. Yes, it it's is. a good day in the neighborhood. <laughs> yes, I am Joshua Wright, your Jupiter journeyman, and I am going to be taking you all on a journey with my wonderful, wonderful shipmates here to my left. I have the crop circle conspirator, Miss Dina Kalafala. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how, what you want me to say in response to that. I'm just saying you, you're on top of things. You know, I've, I've been watching the videos and seeing your take. You're on top of it. I love it. And to your left, I have our astral avatar who always gives us every single sign, Miss Hallie Johnson. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Kill it! <laughs> wow, that was good. And last but not least, all of you know him as the real Jack Farmer, our sci-fi savant. What's happening, sir? I am Jack, and I am also going to be in the chat tonight, and uh, you will definitely want to be a part of the chat tonight, because we obviously have a very cool guest coming up in a little bit, and any of your questions and comments mm -hmm. may get asked to JR himself, so make sure to go ahead and pop in there. That's right, y'all. Look at that. You know, Jack always comes with the popcorn and the butter, so y'all gotta stay tuned so he can <laughs> get a little fat with us, okay? I really like the way you just said that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have our special guest here today. We, we're going to eliminate our special segments this evening for our special guest. Before we get to any of that, I do want to talk about the show, and I want to start with Jack tonight. What was your thought of the show? You know, this is one of those shows, obviously it was a, a dream episode, and mm -hmm. I think sometimes those can become what we would consider a throwaway episode, but this, to me, felt like such a character-defining episode for Nico. I, it vastly changes a lot of what I've seen in the past from, from Nico, and definitely changes the projection of the future. So I thought, from a character development standpoint, great episode. Yes. Hallie, what did you think about Guilt Trip? This was definitely a dark night of the soul moment, like okay. in the entire show. I really love how like they just dove really deeply into Nico's subconscious because I feel like in so many ways we can all relate to that type of guilt and, and regret and hurt. And we finally got to understand what happened, like why she's so on edge. Mm -hmm. So that was really, really interesting. And then her and William finally got to hug. I was like, oh, oh Lord, here we I go. I almost cried. Mm -mm, got a chick on her man. <laughs> Twice <laughs> in one episode. I'm right? saying. <laughs> all right, Dina, what did you think? Well, I'm just glad that we we finally got some context yes to like everything yeah just, that's true I'm, I'm so happy that we had that but i will say that as soon as august was taken by the monster alien <laughs> person thing i i just knew it was like a fever dream anxiety dream type of thing oh okay like I, I, that at that point i was just like this ain't real it took, <laughs> okay. it took me at least three people before i was like wait a minute something's up when august took when august taught when august got took i was literally like oh like, I had that moment, oh, no. I thought it was real. No. Well, at, that, at that moment, I knew. What'd you think, Josh? Oh, well, that's kind of what we're getting into. You oh, feel okay. me? So, okay, so I... I... Okay, let me do it this way. <laughs> so, Nico is guilty of something. She's feeling guilt. Let's do it this mm -hmm. way. And part of what I saw was uh, what's called survivor guilt. Is when the person who survives a traumatic experience feels guilty that the other people did it. Yeah. That's what I derived from this. And when I saw that August was the first to go, I remember that her brother, who we now found his name is Billy, or was Billy, he died on the first trip with, uh, with Nico. Right. So now I'm figuring out, is Nico, is she dreaming? Or is she imagining the worst that could happen? Huh. Some, something, speaking of Billy, I, one of the, the biggest moments of the entire season to me was very subtle, but it was when she walked up to Billy in the dream and she just said, we sh she said, we might run into some planets in the rings of, of Saturn. We should have listened to you. Because that obviously is what leads to the, the destruction of the Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. And looking back, that is the literal exact scenario that the Salvari was in when they said, let's go through the dark space, but there might be planets in the way. Mm -hmm. And that is that is the exact reason why she said, no, it's not worth it. We got to go around. 
And looking back, it makes those decisions that she made suddenly mean a lot more and make a lot more sense that there's something that really happened there. And so I, I thought that was best scene of of the episode. Okay, uh, what did you think, Hallie, of how like like she referenced Billy, but August dies first? Did it fit? I know it felt real, but do you think that was her way of playing out the worst possible scenario? I think it was. I think it was her way of playing out the best possible scenario because the whole point of this dream state was for her to finally not necessarily work it out, but accept it. Mm -hmm. And that was very interesting because once again, like I, I, I dive really deeply into the psychology of the show and how much it relates to us as, as human beings. Of course. And, and oftentimes we replay certain situations in our lives in order to work through them. But what we really get to understand is it's actually just accepting that it happened and allowing ourselves to move on. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really wonderful that they threw it in because now we all get to carry that in a way in our okay. subconscious. Okay. What about you, Ms. Dina? She, so Nico definitely does not want August to die because okay. her older, she feels, she, you can tell that she still feels very guilty that her older brother died, especially. Mm -hmm because her older brother like warned them yes. about what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So she's not over that at all. So it's, the whole okay. thing is just an anxiety dream. Okay, it, it anxiety does play a big part in it. Uh, I do also think that we noticed that Nico had a relationship with James Hudson. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. gosh. I've, been, that one. I've, been, I've been saying all this time, uh-oh, she's in space with Mr. Dreamy, and as soon as we see her in space with a different Mr. Dreamy, look what happens. You know so what? Was Nick, so was she, I just, I was she know, cheating? Was she, did she meet her husband at that point? Well, this is the it, thing. It was 10 years ago. How not, old is her daughter? They oh, said right. nine. Her daughter was, is going to be eight. Her daughter's going to be eight. And oh. and Eric said when he met Harper that it was nine years that she had been in their lives ruining or ruining his life. So oh, were, wow. so were Nico and Eric together when she met James or was it right after when James died? You know what it probably was? I, I think Eric does that thing that I call camping where he was just kind of like circling around waiting. Oh, okay. I mean, of course you he didn't was expect there for him her. to die, but, <laughs> okay. but like Eric was kind of like, yo, let me, I can't wait to get back. Okay, so we're not going to paint Nico as a, a person of infidelity. No, I don't think that She's that was loyal. the case. Okay, yeah, all right. I don't think so either. But mm. yo, the whole time I watched the episode, I was thinking about your opinion, Jack when you said that Nico's actually going to try and kill everyone. And I was like, wow, was Jack right? Is Nico the Can we, villain? bring it in the booth, can we please cut that out where... <laughs> <laughs> but then what had happened was I found out it was just a dream and I was like, oh, okay, thank you, Jack was not right because I cannot live with that. <laughs> okay, well, um, I want to talk a little bit about mental health. Uh, we see that that is a big... It's an important factor in our world today. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in this episode that PTSD has been revisited with Nico. Yeah. So we see she can't wake up. She's forcing herself to stay asleep. Something is keeping her asleep. But in the dream, she's also uh, Dr. Zane, who will be on with us later, references how Nico is using the dream as a term of therapy to work out her differences. Mm -hmm. And so I see that the PTSD has reared its head in the dream. And now Nico is beginning to fight through and make decisions opposite of what she did before. So my question would be, can, and I know this may be sensitive, but can PTSD be helpful to people? Hmm. I don't have PTSD, so I don't think that I'm qualified to speak on this. Well, no, we're not talking about based off your qualifications as uh, as a, someone who's had experience with it. But I mean, I'm saying that we know enough about PTSD. Most times we see it, they, they rear it as someone, you know, went out and committed a, a mass murder or something like that. But in this situation, it seems like Nico is using her PTSD to make better decisions the next time around. Yeah. So that's why I'm asking, can it be helpful I, in certain, I, certain situations? I think she's making better decisions this time around because she has those experiences not because of the PTSD itself. Okay, that's a fair point. Yeah. But okay. uh, but I think and I don't have any experience with PTSD as well, but I, I do think the fact that she's held on to it and in this dream replaying it and saying what if I did change it? Mm -hmm. And what if I did it this way? What if I did it that way? And coming to eventually accept that look, regardless of how you played it out, this is the situation you're in. Nothing right. changes. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know how those two things relate, but I think it was good for the character to to hold on to that and work it out so that now she can move on from it. In the next with level. That information. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, what about I, you, Helen? I, I actually would love to answer that question. Um, I do think that PTSD did support her with moving through that whole just situation in general. Mm -hmm. And not in a sense where it necessarily helped her make better decisions, but she healed inner wounds right. that catapulted her to the direction of making better decisions. And I know that both you two, Jack and Dina, you guys said that you don't have issues with PTSD, but we'd be surprised how much we uh, just really just deeply embed in our subconscious mm -hmm. of things we've experienced as children and how we acted out as an adult in mm -hmm. certain things. So I think a lot of people have PTSD. It may not be as extreme as someone coming back from war a couple years ago, mm -hmm. but if you had trauma as a kid, which a lot of us had, whether it was bullying or, you know, things, yeah. you know, I was bullied all that. the time as a kid. Well, see, there you go. You probably have <laughs> I some have so many insecurities PTSD. now because of it. <laughs> right. You probably have some I'll, form of it. I'll and never you know, have right. an ego just because... <laughs> I'll always have imposter syndrome because I was bullied as a kid. Oh, gosh. And you know what? And a then lot look of how beautiful were. you turned out. You turned right. out intelligent, beautiful, so, you know, whatever they have Thanks. to say, whatever those right. people. Right, and then that totally, it really relates to how Nico handled the story because she she really moved through it so gracefully. It just, yeah. it made me really gain a lot of respect for her character. Right, as a leader. Thank you, so, uh, <laughs> I would like to move into <laughs> into that the topic, shame. but but before before we move forward, I, I want Miss Hallie to address our beautiful beautiful audience out there. Yeah, absolutely. So before we move on to our next topic, I wanted to thank you guys so much for joining us and making us the ESPN of TV talk. So please go ahead and support us. We can't do this without you. Go ahead and like and comment, subscribe. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> you can't see Jack, but right now he's making little little hand gestures for me and it's perfect and if you are watching or listening to us on itunes go ahead and give us a really good rating we couldn't do this without you thank you so much yes so <laughs> wonderful well i do want to talk about nico going back a couple of episodes as a leader i know that was a a touchy top topic for one of us on the panel i won't say who it was but it was, it was a touchy topic everyone knows who it was <laughs> so i want to know with now that we understand what happened with the pilgrim and now with the the new ship i want to know how you all feel about nico's leadership knowing what happened in the past is she a good leader now oh you know what i i think she's the same leader but we just now as like watchers get to have better insight okay. i just wish she'd be more transparent with her crew Okay. Because I don't think it's cool that she woke up and was just yelling at people like, "How could you do that?" And then at the end, she's like, oh, "Okay, we'll just go for it anyways." Mm -hmm. Like it was just, that was it just so seemed, frustrating. Right. It just seemed <laughs> really, really rude. And it's like I don't think she wants to mess with Cassie right now because she kind of killed her boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and okay. she doesn't even know that she did. So it's like she might be just collecting a little data right now mm. of like, "I'm gonna take this girl out." Okay. But I think that she gets to be more honest with her crew and be more more open with them about her experiences she doesn't need to necessarily have a kumbaya moment because okay. she still wants to maintain her integrity as a leader um but i think it's time she open up a little bit so that they gain some insight because they're waiting for that they're hungry for that they're always asking her questions they and are. looking at her I like agree. like who are you okay and no one knows all right well i want to i want to go to dina on this one so dina what do you think about her leadership now knowing the background nico is a good leader with flaws Okay, she has, like most she has, yeah, good she, leaders. She has great leadership skills. I just don't think that she's perfect. And that should be expected of just about any person, anyone who's human. Okay, do, so. you, do you blame her? And Jack, I'm coming to you. Do you blame her for the decision she made on the Pilgrim where she sacrificed everyone for herself? I don't... I was... Oh, no, no, Jack. <laughs> no, no, I mean, truth be told, obviously... It's better to sacrifice some than everybody because the people that didn't make it weren't going to make it one way or the other. Okay. Um, and I think something about this show is... What, what, what do you mean by they weren't going to make it one way or another? You mean they were going to die anyway? Yeah, on the Pilgrim, when she okay. jettisoned that part with the 10 people in it, if she didn't do that, then the whole ship was lost. Right. So, so, so they, they weren't going to make it whether she jettisoned them or not. And so I, should she have brought some of them in the protective room with her? She could have lost She didn't, she didn't have the time, boyfriend. I think. Oh, okay, the, the time. Okay, all right, was, well, go was, ahead. Was the issue. And so um, 
I think that from that, this I think that's what the kind of the episode was about was really her realizing like, look, there was nothing I could have done, even though I cared about these people, even though I, there was wrong decisions made. At that point, there was nothing I could have done, and I have to to deal with that decision. Uh, as far as leadership goes, you know, I'm I'm still hashtag justice for Ian, but um, oh my god, but, uh, I just gave you a really good eye roll right but, now. But um, but uh, you know, I, even still though, I look at like Cass as a better leader. Cass felt like a leader the whole time, mm-hmm. even when like Bernie's going to her and she's like, should we should we go to this planet or not? Should we do this or not? She seems more level headed and more grounded where Nico seems to let different scenarios sort of pull her in different ways and and she doesn't have a, a consistent reaction to things sometimes if Cass had the work experience that Nico did Cass would be a better leader than Nico in my opinion okay that, but that was I was going to lead into that question Dina brings up a, a salient point is it fair to compare Cass's leadership of which we know she's has none to Nico's leadership of where she's had people die under her command they're, they're at like different levels of their careers. Like right. they haven't experienced that, the same thing. Yeah, okay. I think that Cass and Nico are, are virtually the same. Like, think about it. They both don't really want to take orders from anyone on the crew, but they'll take their ideas anyways, act as if it was theirs all along after they criticize them first. Okay. And then on top of that, they both had secret dead lovers on the ships. Okay, so those are those are <laughs> those seem like Yikes. symptoms of their leadership. I don't know if I would compare Nico to Cass because we don't know enough of Nico of Cass's background. Yeah, that's true. But we do know that Nico was handpicked by Dubois. Now that I am still searching, why would you select this person? Last uh, last episode we discussed being able to think, you know, being an impromptu thinker versus someone who prepares long term type mm-hmm. of thinking and preparation. And so I'm looking at it like, did Dubois select Nico because Nico has proven herself to be someone who can fix small situations, or did she select Nico so that she can have a fall guy if the plan goes awry? That's what I'm thinking about. So when Cass comes in, Cass has a vendetta. I feel like she has a vendetta. Why else would Nico have killed her in the dream? Or was it a dream? Was it foreshadowing what may happen later on? I think Cass is going to come after Nico at one point, and then Nico's going to have to make the decision and take out her protege. Okay. Saying. She's done it already before. Why wouldn't she do it again? You know yeah. what, Chad? <laughs> there you go. The, <laughs> the, difference, point, but whatever. the <laughs> difference is, though, I'm not on one side or the other. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm trying to be more of a realist about it. If someone were attacking you with a fatal, ob- a lethal object, excuse me, yeah. would, the only way to defend yourself is... By death. Yeah, yeah, death. Like, I am not having Jack a conversation. Jack died for Ian. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say. I will say this. Um, oh, even so even now, obviously Ian's gone and, and Cass is in that role. It, it still feels like there are unofficial sides kind of coming together. There's the the people like August who feel very much like they are Team Nico and they like Nico and she's all about Nico. Mm-hmm. Where then you have the ones like Michelle who aren't so much. Team Nico. Michelle's off uh, for herself. Michelle. I mean, Michelle. Sure. I don't know. I don't know what team She's Michelle is on. Laid. But it does feel a little <laughs> bit like, um, like there are not teams per se, but like it wouldn't shock me if we saw another they're mutiny. Clicks. You mean there's clicks? Little clicks around the ship. Yeah. There's there's like the the pro Nico team and the the anti Nico team, and and Cass I think is kind of the the head figure of not. Not that Cass has done anything anti Nico, but she's definitely. It feels like they're the two alphas on the ship, and I could see as as the show goes on that these. I think there's going to be more of a divide between the two as the as the show goes on. This whole okay. ship is a mess. Well, this is okay. So this is what I, I want to move into this. I want to talk about um, Doctor Zane. Doctor Zane is having a conversation with Cass and William. And they're, they're speaking of how Nico is forcing herself, in a sense, to stay asleep. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, she's working out whatever therapy she needs, whatever demons, whatever they want to call them, in the dream. And we notice that Dr. Zane is the one who comes in and says, hey, we have to pull this out of her neck. I can't remember the name of it, but we have to pull it out of her neck. If we don't do it the right way, it has to be, has to be careful, has to be surreptitious. If we don't do mm-hmm. it the right way, it can pierce her brain. It could cause long-term damage my question is why is it that nico and Cass are the alphas 
But in the last three episodes, Dr. Zane has been the one solving most of the medical problems outside of the medical problems, but most of the other problems of along, across the shipmates. Like, why is Zane not considered a leader? Because Zane is the brain. Zane, Zane I, I think that Zane is, is pretty diplomatic, but doesn't necessarily, like I said before, I think Zane is more of like our leader of the week. And so far, Zane has been showing up as a leader for the past, uh, well, I mean, couple of episodes, I right. can't say weeks, but I, um, I think I'd want to see more of that leadership just to see how it goes. But typically, people are very like brainy. Um, gosh, am I, I don't know how to say that I, correctly, but I just don't think that Zane is the shot caller. Correct. There okay, we that's go. what you're saying. Yes, thank you for getting yeah. that out of my mouth. Yeah, I don't okay. I don't feel Zane is necessarily a leader or a decision maker, but more so gives us pros a and doer. cons. And it's, it's like, it's, well, it's, here it is. Okay, let, I want Dina to follow up. Go ahead, Dina. Yeah, when he's asked something, he'll give his answer to it, but he doesn't just give his answer without being asked. Yeah. Oh, okay, I understand that. So, so he's somebody who's able to respond when spoken to. Yeah. He has ideas. He has right. solutions. But if you don't ask him anything, he's willing to let the ship go down. Zan is an expert. Maybe, maybe not, not go a, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't I'm just think asking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let the ship go down. Saying, <laughs> yeah. You know, Jack. But, what, 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 I, was, I was gonna say, I think Zane's to use a sports analogy is kind of like the running back. In a, okay. on a football team, it, you know, what does the, that mean? The, co the coach that. and the quarterback are the one that sort of pick the plays mm -hmm. and sort of direct mm -hmm. the team. But you give the running back the ball, and they're going to get you to move forward. And every they're now get and you they block, off. and every now and again they block. So I think Zane is very much like this is my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. I handle my business. If you need more than that, let me know. But I'm going to keep everyone healthy on the ship. And so far, Zane I has. think there's an underlying leadership with Zane. Because I look at it as doctors are the leaders of our medical world. I mean, that's the highest level you can get to in the medical world is a doctor. And they don't take orders from anybody. Doctors run the medical practices, not PAs, not nurse practitioners, LPNs, none of those people. But doctors. But they don't run spaceships. They no, run that's hospitals. not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in the sense of when I'm looking at the situations that, are, that have aligned these last couple of episodes, Zane has been the one that the leaders have relied upon for mm -hmm. answers. So to me, there's an underlying issue, not issue, but there's an underlying leadership that I think Zane has. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. He, you know, he, he may not be, uh, I'll, use, I'll use a coach as a good example. So you have a head coach, an offensive coordinator, and a defensive coordinator. Those are the three most important coaching positions with football. But if the head coach is out, who takes over? The offensive coordinator. Okay. I think mm -hmm. Zane is the offensive coordinator. I think he's calling more plays than people are realizing. It's just that the head coach is making the final decisions. And so I feel like if Zane were to pull out, I think that that offense would be in some trouble. I, That's what I think. I think we, uh, we have a, a really good comment here in the chat. Uh, shout out to ER's grandpa uh, with the comment, Zane's lane is medical, not military or administrative. So I think that's kind of going back to uh, to what Zane does and, and why Zane isn't the leader and is the coach, as you right. said. Is well it's, it's said. not. It's that not is very well said. That's mm -hmm. not. That's not Zane's lane. Okay. It took us like five minutes to get that out, and then our ER's grandpa just put it straight to us. Shout out to ER's grandpa. Shout out to ER's grandpa. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we have covered this show. I want to get into our predictions. Bum, 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 bum. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. All right, <laughs> and uh, we're going to start with Jack. We want to make it quick, and then we're going to move right on into our wonderful, wonderful guest. Go ahead, Jack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, as I said before, I, I think that we're going to see another mutiny down the road. Okay. I, think, I think we're going to see more and more of a divide. I think the relationships are going to become more uh, stronger and more divisive. I think there's obviously the, like a, a love triangle going between Javier, Oliver, and August, it looks like is happening. I think okay. that's yeah. going to drive... I think that's going to drive some that. people apart. <laughs> uh, Michelle and Sasha having a relationship that I think is going to start moving things around. So I, I think we're going to see this. I think we're going to see sides drawn. Okay, go ahead, Hallie. What are you laughing about? <clears throat> I'm laughing because I'm like slowly agreeing with Jack on so many things, and it's killing me on the inside just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I do. Good. But at the same time, it's it's been pretty predictable. There's been a lot of mutiny. I don't think it's going to stop now. So, yeah, I think we're going to have more mutiny, of course. 
And then, like, Michelle, I predicted her hooking up with somebody. And, of course, it had to be Sasha because Sasha is not an alpha and Michelle acts like she is and she needs someone to submit to her. So I'm like, okay, that I I felt that that was going to happen. That whole thing made sense. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen. And um, I think they're going to land on the moon and we're going to probably meet these creatures and... I don't know what's going to happen after that. This would be fun. Okay. All right. Well, go ahead, Dina, your last prediction, and then we're going to move on over. They are going to land on the planet, and Bernie is going to find some food. Bernie? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bring this whole episode. All right. <laughs> well, like, um, we can't run out of food. <laughs> well, we're happy, happy, happy that we were able to cover that. We do have our wonderful, wonderful guest here, J.R. Tinnacol. We are very glad to have him joining us. Yay! It is so exciting to have such a wonderful person on the panel. We have been watching Another Life for now two weeks. We have covered so many episodes, and Dr. Zane is really, really killing it. So we want to say hello, hello to Jr. Everybody say hello to Jr. Hello. Hey, Jr. How's it going? <laughs> Can you hear us? Oh. Uh-oh. Coming to us live via the uh, Worldwide After Buzz satellite network. Oh, oh no. Come in, star command. Come in, star command. Can you hear us now? JR, can you hear us? Hello, JR. How's it going? Uh oh. Oh, no. We'll have it in one second. We're going to get it going here. Hey Jack, in can just you a sing second. us a song while we're waiting? Actually, you didn't sing. tell us your predictions. Oh, that's yeah. true. Well, 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 my predictions, I think that. I really think that Zane is going to step up, and I think that Nico and William still are going to be part of that leadership team. That's what I think is going to happen. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Can you hear us yet? How's it going, Hello. JR? Welcome to the show. Oh, no. I think we're still having some uh, some audio issues. No. Just to let oh. you guys know who's listening right now, JR, we have him currently waiting to speak with us. And even though we can't hear him, we can see him on camera and he looks really handsome. <laughs> Just the brow game is Just on me. point. For real. The I'm brows. jealous. I'm a little bit jealous and I want to know. What's Wait, up? What's up? What's up? What's up? This is just good TV. We're trying to make sure that we uh, build up the anticipation for you guys. I still think you should sing us a song, Jack. All right. Well, let's uh, <clears throat> before we can before we continue with Jr. While we wait, <clears throat> excuse me. I do want to address Michelle and Sasha. Mm-hmm. It's about did, time. Did y'all see that coming? I saw, I saw that coming. <laughs> that made me really happy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I I saw Michelle and Sasha coming when they were at the table, and she was like, "You're so useless." And I was like, that's a defense mechanism. And then we see a few scenes later that he's very useful. <laughs> what did you think about that, Dina? <laughs> 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 Sasha's useful. Sasha's going to have a little bit more swagger around the, uh, the spaceship. She's going to be walking side to side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you know, how, I mean, do you think that's going to impact how they decide who lives or dies or Michelle's personality? Because Sasha was the one who warned her and said, watch your mouth around Nico. Michelle doesn't care. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, so I think we have JR with us. Hello, JR. Hey, hey JR. What's hey. It going? <laughs> it's working. Yeah. Come and start, come in. Oh, man. We are so excited to have you on, JR. Thank you so much for, uh, for being on. No, I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, all, we've, we've been excited for this all day long. Um, and we, like I said, appreciate you joining us via the uh, AfterBuzz Worldwide Satellite Network, as uh, I like to call it. Um, uh, you're uh, you're up there in Vancouver now, right? Am yes. Yeah, I I'm originally from Tacoma. We would have practically been neighbors. Nice, nice. The weather's so beautiful here right now too, which is really unusual for Vancouver, but it's stunning. Yeah, that's uh that's cool. You went from Australia up to Vancouver, or did you stay over in LA for a bit? From Sydney, well, originally from a small town in Australia, I moved to Sydney when I was 18. I've been living there, and then I moved here like two years ago and live here and have been working and having the best time ever. 
That's wonderful. Yes, uh, I hear that that wonderful accent. I have some Australian friends here, and you sound just like them. <laughs> I literally was not expecting the accent. I'm so Me used neither. to it. <laughs> like your American and accent is so wonderful. Yeah. Like you do such a great job. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that actually. Um, I'm I'm curious. One of my big questions uh, for you, if I can go ahead and just dive right in. I've acted once in my life. It was a uh, two lines in my my buddy's upcoming movie, uh, Dead Body. <laughs> Check it out in January. Okay. But, Shameless but, work. Um, but uh, it's it's interesting. Something I learned, or, or for the first time, you read a script and you kind of see a character in your head, and then you get on set, and everyone portrays characters differently than mm. uh, what you read them as. When you right. when you got this role, was it like an audition, and they said, "Hey, play this part," or did you come up with it yourself, or how did that come about for the Zane character? Thanks. The writers uh, really wanted to just pre represent the LGBTQ plus um, community really well and do it justice. And so they're really open to everybody's ideas. Um, when I got my sides, my audition, I just had this strong connection with the character and I just I just felt like a new Zane. I felt like I was Zane, but if I was a space doctor, I would be Zane. So <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, gave it my best shot, I think. We were in there for about 45 minutes during the callback session. And there was just lots of conversation and discussion about Zane, which I loved. And I was so open to what I what I thought of Zane. And I think because I stood up for Zane so much, I think that might have helped me get the role. That's wonderful. Mm, and yeah. then and speaking about, you know, being a member of the LGBTQI community, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but and back in the sixties there was a woman, her name is Michelle Nichols, and she was the first African American woman to play on TV in a really groundbreaking role on Star Trek. And because what? of her, it actually opened up doors for more African American people to be on TV in positive roles. And she was also responsible for recruiting African Americans in NASA, including Mae Jameson. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you, as a member of the LGBTQI community, as a non-gender conforming person, how does that feel to know that you are also in those shoes of creating just groundbreaking work? You don't really think about it in that way when you're going for the role. Like I think I might it might sound selfish, but I just wanted to work as an actor and I didn't I never really thought of myself as different. Like growing up, I've never really looked at myself. My parents were really good. My mother was really great good at raising me and never making me feel different or odd or, you know. So I think it I didn't feel different until someone told me I was different, like in high school or whatever. Mm. So I've kind of just done my own thing and I think the way that people are absorbing Zane's character and really understanding who they are has been amazing. Like the messages I get um, through my Instagram or socials has been nothing but positive, nothing but love. That's wonderful. That's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what motivates you in your career? What keeps you going? Oh my God. Um, I just love acting so much. I love to work. I love being on set for another life. It was like the best thing ever. So, oh my God, I'm getting choked up. <laughs> how, it's okay. how, how, it's how, how did you decide that this was the path for you? I've always known it. I've always felt it. Um, I remember as a kid, my imagination was just so wild. I could mm -hmm. see everything. You know when you play as a kid and you have your toys and the whole world is just in front of you? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I used to watch behind the scenes stuff when I was a, a kid, I'd be like, oh, movies are just adults playing. I think I want to do that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Play for the rest of your life. That's so well said. And I have loved it ever since. I don't remember when I even started loving this. Like, it's just always been there. Yep. It was uh, it was innate. So yeah. we, um, one thing I did notice, I noticed how you are so great at interpreting being a doctor. Do you have any? I mean, you are like I. I, I have a. a you, it's like you went to medical school. Yeah, right? I, 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 I have a, I have school. a lot of affiliation with uh, with medical doctors. Uh, you know, in my family, and uh, my wife is pre med in college. So I want to know: Did you have people around you who helped you interpret this role, or did you have any experiences that helped you lead what Zane was going to be? Yeah. So I worked with a coach for um, two months before we started shooting. Um, and they really encouraged me to go to hospitals and just kind of get the gist of how a medical doctor would would act in an emergency room because, of course, on this show, everything is just 
chaotic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, even just talking, uh, even like saying the lines while I'm like bandaging someone's arm just to get used to that rhythm. Um, but of course, with all the lingo that's like all the medical jargon, I definitely had to look into that. I was dabbling in a bit of neuroscience on YouTube and all the tutorials I could find. But I mean, again, like how much can you cover in what, 20 minutes or like the <laughs> couple of months that I had. So I really did the best I could and just making sure I knew what I was saying and what was going on. Cause reading the scripts before we would shoot, like you just get so overwhelmed and intimidated by all this dialogue. And I was like, I don't think I can do this. And you just do it. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, I noticed that you just did it in this last episode when Nico was comatose. How yeah. did it feel being the savior this week? Well, that, that whole episode was like the first time you really see Zane um, kind of liven up and give it to them. <laughs> so I, I just remember rehearsing those, those lines and just wanting to deliver the best I could. And it was really fun working with Elizabeth and Sam when we were just like really bouncing off each other the whole time. And Katie is so supportive. She's always there to help you and um, give her tips. There were some days where I didn't feel like I did a good job. Like I was like, I just don't think that was the best take. Mm. You know, she's just like, no, you just you just do it. Give every time you do a take, give something different so the director has options. And yeah, I think it was amazing. That's wonderful. I think it's so cool that you you talk about how sometimes there are takes where you're not super proud of your work, but you kind of work with your fellow castmates. I know here, even with us, sometimes we'll we'll rap and some of us will go, oh man, I could have done this better, or could have done that better. And the team always comes to your aid and go, no, you were great. And I think that helps really create the chemistry that we all see on the show. Uh, yeah. so that, something I love about your character is that you're so matter of fact, but so empathetic at the same time. It feels <laughs> That's like, hard to do. I feel like if you put that on a resume, I'd be like, what are you talking about? You can't do both at the same time, but you nail it. I mean, like, what other way do you go when everyone's at 100? Like, there's no way <laughs> else to do. So I'm like, I might bring it down, be the voice of reason for everybody, and just be the heart, I guess, of the ship. And they were kind of the, the directions given for Zane, so I just kind of went with that, and it just, yeah, it suited really well. That's wonderful. Yeah, I um, if, if it's okay, I do want to go ahead and ask a question that's, it, it, it's going to be tough to answer, because obviously we are not finished with the whole season, but Jennifer Henderson here in the live chat had a question that I'm hoping that I can throw your way, and maybe you can answer without too many spoilers, and she's asking, what kind of development or character opportunity are you hoping for in a season two? Oh my god. Assuming your character makes it to season two, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't tell me you don't make it to season two. Don't tell me I, anything. Just well, <laughs> I'm not lying. Um I really love the flashback with um Cass. Wait, have you guys had that yet? No, oh my no. god, damn it. We're on a <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. It's okay, it's alright. It's okay. Um, we, do, we do see more of Cass's character throughout the, the series. Mm -hmm. And I kind of would like that. I think um seeing how everybody got to the position that they're in on the ship, um, where they came from, because we are all 20-somethings in these amazing mm -hmm. professions, which is really unheard of. I know. But yeah. it's in 70 or 50 to 70 years' time, so maybe schools then specialize in, um, you know, you specialize in doing something younger, yeah. and you start off younger. So that would be cool to see where everyone kind of started, if we do flashbacks or, um, yeah. I guess that's probably what I'd like to see. Yeah, sounds like you want your fans to get to know you a little bit better as the character. So mm -hmm. that's so. really amazing. And you know, it's it's kind of funny too. We've been debating in the studio this whole time about like impeaching Nico and then putting you as leader of the ship. That's and awesome. yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm actually starting to lean in that direction now. This is getting really interesting. <laughs> How would you feel about that, becoming the leader of the ship? I am not. That, that is Starbuck that is leading that. That's, <laughs> I mean, like, that's Katie Sackhoff. She's got that ship going strong. So I think having the strong allies is, you know, it's a team effort. So I think having those strong allies like Cass, Zane, Bernie, the, the Alex's characters, um, I think that's all she needs. And we're just going to power through and kill it. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. Awesome. <laughs> uh, what is your most memorable moment from filming season one? Like a behind the scenes moment? Ooh, probably we, again, see, I can't spoil it. There is a scene that comes up later on that it, it, it includes a sewage um, piping and things like that. Um, 
And we did that in one take, which was really cool. Wow. Like we didn't have to reset anything. It gets really messy. That was really fun. Like that was just exciting. There was like, there's not much uh, that we got to, I got to do in the way of like stunts or anything like that or anything crazy like wires so that was a really fun day yeah well jr i'm telling you we have had a wonderful time having you here with us our fans have really loved it we've loved it we thank you so much for coming on the show if there's anything you want to share with the fans let them know where to find you any projects you may have coming up just let everybody know actually one more question real quick is there anything that we didn't ask you that you want to add yeah um no i think you guys covered it all i'm happy with everything that you guys asked Okay, awesome. Yeah, all right. Thanks. So just <laughs> just let all the fans know where they can find you and everything on My social media. I have Instagram. It's just JR Tanaka, at JR Tanaka. And I think that's why I, I only have Instagram. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's all right. That's what I have for better for me in the long run. <laughs> all right. Well, we thank you so much. Everybody say goodbye to JR. Bye, bye JR. JR. Thank you so much for being on. Okay, bye. Bye bye. All right, everybody, that was a wonderful interview with our wonderful guest, Dr. Zane J.R. Tanako. I heard him say with his accent. And uh, <laughs> right now, I want everybody to know that we are happy to cover Another Life Season 1, Episode 4, Guilt Trip. It took us on a journey, and I was your Jupiter journeyman who did it with you. And I want Jack to tell everybody where he can find where he, you can find him and everyone else. You can go ahead and find me on social media at Real Jack Farmer. You can also find my website, jackcfarmer.com, if you're looking for any DJ, MC, hosts for your events. And you can see me on August 11th for the SummerSlam After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> my name is Hallie Johnson, and you can find me on Instagram at Pure Hallie, P U R E H A L L E. Dina Kalafala, and my handle is exactly that, at Dina Kalafala on Instagram and Twitter. Sorry if uh, it's a hard name to spell. <laughs> it's all <laughs> good. Choice. I am your host, Joshua Wright, known on social media as Cleverly Clad, and I will be here Monday with the rest of this panel, and we will go on another journey together. See you later. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menounos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> if you regret hearing, I know the host only do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners of it. Those of the host only do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.